Hey everyone, different kind of video today. It's gonna to be titled, This Isn't a Movie, It's Your Life. Think about that for a minute. If you like the content, please subscribe. So many times when you are in the relationship with the narcissist, it is so much like a movie that you have seen, a drama, a thriller, a horror, sometimes even a comedy. But the truth of the matter is, so many unusual things take place when you are in a narcissistic relationship. Many you can't even wrap your head around, specifically if you don't know what narcissism is. If you don't have the education, you get stuck in this spin cycle, basically the devaluation stage, and you experience so many poor behaviors and toxic behaviors, and you are seeing things that, if you were to share some of the things you saw with another individual, they would be like, uh, how is that even possible? I just don't get it. But it's real, and it happened to you. Think about all the unusual things you experienced. Think about all of the strange behaviors that you experienced when you were in the relationship that you can't explain any of these things to a person who hasn't gone through the narcissistic abusive cycle because they will think that you have some concerns, let's put it that way. They will doubt you. They will not give you credit, meaning they'll just be like, they, they won't, they'll be like, really, I, I just don't think that. And will slowly they'll remove themselves from you. Yeah, it happens every day. I don't tell you why, because unless you've gone through the narcissistic relationship, you don't get the wisdom firsthand. You don't. You can read a book and you can watch videos and all that, and I get it. That's fine. But I'm, I'm saying if you came through the fire and you've risen through the ashes like a phoenix, or if you just got discarded yesterday and you're putting yourself back together, I can promise you, you have so many very unusual behaviors that you experience with the narcissist and you tolerated things you never thought you would tolerate. You said things you certainly never thought you would say. You became someone that you didn't even recognize anymore because you became a shell of yourself because the narcissist consumed your energy. That's exactly what they did, and that was on purpose. Remember, back then you didn't know about narcissism. Now you're getting the education. You're getting stronger. But one of the things is that you, you can't really wrap your head around it. Think about gaslighting. And think about giving, being given the silent treatment. Who would, let, let's focus on the silent treatment for a minute. Who would give another individual, as being an adult, the silent treatment? Think about this, who would do it? It doesn't make sense, does it? No, because why? Because human beings are meant to communicate with each other. That is the foundation of a stable relationship. But remember, the narcissistic relationship was anything but stable. That's why there was little to no communication in it. That's why every time you wanted to have a conversation with the narcissist, they would put it off or say they're tired, they're too busy, or blame you, or say that you've got issues, you've got concerns, things like that. Remember what I'm sharing with you. All of these definitions and terms in the glossary of the narcissistic abusive catalog, you're gonna have to learn if you haven't already. And you're gonna have to process these things one by one. Example, what is triangulation? What is gaslighting? What is mirroring? projection, blame shifting, object constancy, the trauma bond, the list goes on and on. The point being that when you were in the relationship, you were putting up with all of these things and some things you got sucked into, i.e. the trauma bond, you didn't even know about it. And what were you doing the whole time? You were working for the narcissist. You were working to get them what they wanted, where they wanted, how they wanted. And you put them high up on a pedestal. I can assure you, you did. Or if you didn't, place them as high in the pedestal, you certainly gave them your resources. And what did they do? They continued to take and take and take from you. And many times you were pushed to the brink. Perhaps let's say you were married and, and after a rage fit or after you experienced poor behavior, perhaps you took your wedding ring off and placed it on the kitchen counter and said, I'm done. I, I just don't need to be treated like this. And then what would the narcissist do? They would probably do the same thing. What would happen next? Cooler heads would prevail after some time had passed. And what was that? Why, would, why did that happen? That happened because the narcissist wanted to suck you back in, to draw you back in, because there were more resources to be depleted from you. So you made up, most likely, and then you tolerated the poor behavior again, because remember, every narcissistic relationship, it doesn't improve. They deteriorate. They get worse over time. That's a fact. It's exactly what happens. And then let's say you got in another argument with the narcissist. You did it again, you placed the wedding ring down. You're saying, I, I can't do this. Well now really zoom out for a minute. You've done that twice now. And if you know what I'm talking about, drop comments below. 
or something similar, that is a huge red flag because we're, when you are in a union and you're married with an individual, you should be headed in the same direction, focused on the future, creating and planning and building, right? But right there illustrates that no, there was a huge crack in that relationship because now twice you placed the wedding ring down or the narcissist did, it doesn't, however it happened, it happened. These are massive red flags. And why I'm saying that is because really zoom out. If you're in a stable relationship, that's not gonna happen. You will cool down, you'll go for a walk, you'll come back, you'll talk, you'll be honest and authentic and genuine with each other, and then you'll make up and move forward. But that doesn't happen in the narcissistic relationship. What they do is they break your boundaries down, they break your barriers down, they want you apologizing. They don't want to apologize to you. There's no reason for them to apologize. Remember, your, your job is to be the walking apology, the unpaid helper, the person that plans, the person that does, the person that pays, the person that listens, the person that drives. You are not looked at as a beautiful, bright human being. You're looked at as a person that provides a service for the narcissist. And who is footing the bill? That's right, it's you, you're footing the bill. You've always footed the bill, you just didn't realize it until recently, most likely. The narcissist knew this, and I will tell you exactly how they knew it. The reason they knew it is because once the relationship began with you, they figured out what made you tick. In other words, are you an empath? Do you have a lot of money? Do you have a great network of friends and social circle? Do you have a beach house in the Bahamas? Things like that. They figured all this stuff out. They also wanted to learn about your past relationships friendships, romantic relationships, your family, where you've lived, your education. Because once they got this long laundry list of you, they slowly, insidiously began to deconstruct it and to focus on certain elements. An example there would be your friends. Let's say that you had friends for 10, 20, 30 years. Well, the narcissist slowly would remove you from those people, right? Why? Because they know that those people can see the toxicity in the relationship with you and the narcissist and they don't want anything like that being discovered until they get the resources from you. So they will try to drive a wedge between you and your friends, and it works many times. Same thing with family members. Think about this, the, the, one of your, say you're a parent and one of your kids got married and they married a narcissist. What happened then? Most likely, I'll tell you exactly what happened then. Most likely that the, the son or daughter that we're, you're thinking about, they moved far away from you. The next thing is most likely they stopped attending events, meaning holidays or birthday celebrations. The next thing, if they, if they had kids, your grandkids in other words, they slowly removed your access to them. On top of that, they became ice cold. And the next thing you know, you're not even hearing from these people. It gets less and less and less over time. Why? I'll tell you why, because either the person, well, I'll tell you why, the person they married, or unfortunately your son or daughter, is a narcissist. And what they wanted to do was isolate that person away from you to the best of their ability because then they have that person under control. Then they have that person isolated. Then they have that person doing everything for them, not for you. Think about it. This is how it works. This is how the narcissist wants people. They want people isolated. But the strange behaviors in these relationships that are all over the place, the things that you've seen that no one would ever believe, the things that you've heard that no one could ever hear, this is why I suggest frequently to journal, specifically post-narcissistic relationship, to journal about everything you possibly can when you're in the relationship. Why? Because father time ticks on and you will not remember everything. You certainly won't remember it as vividly and or fresh as you do right now. Number two is it's always good to have a journal to reflect back upon your writings from years, decades ago. That is exactly a great thing to do. And whether you journal and you look back at the, the journals in the future or not, it doesn't matter. Carve new neural pathways, get these ideas out onto paper. You can use them again at a later date if you want to or not, but do it, I'm telling you. And also journaling is healthy. It, it is not being on your smartphone. It is not being on a computer. It is not doing anything other than you with a pen and paper or pencil and paper and just celebrating your existence. That's a beautiful thing. In other words, you're slowing down and you're getting ideas out of your mind onto a sheet of paper. I really suggest that. But understand that all the things that you experienced in the relationship, if you were to tell those to someone in the community, they would be like, yep, yeah, that happened with me too. A little bit differently, but it happened with me. I get it. It's amazing, isn't it? Because the narcissists all play by the same playbook. And that is for a whole different video, how they do that. 
But if you were to share that same information that I just mentioned with an individual who has not gone through the narcissistic relationship, they're gonna think that you're not, you don't really know what's going on. Like, uh, really, that's just, uh, that's not the person I know. I don't believe you or I don't get it or they will eventually tune you out. So as the thumbnail mentioned, this isn't a movie, it's your life. It really is your life. It's always been your life. The thing is, is for a period of time when you were with the narcissist, it was their movie. It was their Hollywood script that they wrote you into to play a extra. Yeah, I know it's a difficult pill, but it's true. In the movie, until they could find, until they could cast another character and replace you. That is the narcissistic relationship in a nutshell. But now that the relationship has ended, this isn't a movie. It never was a movie for you. This is your life. You have abundance, you have beauty. You have become awakened and aware. You now understand your value. You most likely didn't understand your value when you were in the relationship because, like I said, it, it was so surreal what you experienced in that relationship. You, you had nowhere to bounce things off of. You didn't know about narcissism. You didn't know about my channel. You didn't, you didn't have any idea about the wisdom or the education. And then lo and behold, you typed something in Google or in YouTube and spouse won't talk to me. You know, and the first word that pops up is narc daily or gaslighting. And you're like, oh my gosh, what is this? Boom, light bulb moment and there you go. You start spiraling down the rabbit hole of education and that's a good thing. Another thing for you, if you're in the relationship currently and you believe that the narcissist, that you believe this person is a narcissist or toxic or whatever, again, Get out your, your pen and paper, write down some strange behaviors, write down what you're seeing in real time. Of course, this is hidden for you, no one else can see this, but just document what you're doing. That's exactly what I did years ago, and I did not even know what I was doing, but that's how I, I discovered what I was up against, and that's why I'm here right now creating content to educate you that perhaps you don't know what's going on. Maybe this is the first video you're, you're ever consume, consuming, and if it is, God bless you. If it's the last video you're ever watching, even better. That means you've made it to my side of the bridge. You've come through the fire and risen through the ashes like a phoenix. And you don't need to consume these videos anymore. God bless you. Go live your best life. Check in from now, from time to time though. But you get my point. So guys, understand this is not a movie. It's your life. And you need to treat it as such. You need to spend your time wisely with people who care about you. People that want to, to you, you to grow and to benefit. And p the people that have the best interest of yours at heart not for an individual who is gonna be using you as a sounding board or as an ATM or as a place where you can put them up in their house or a place that you can loan them money or give them a ride. You get my point? All right, guys, that's the video. I hope you liked it. I loved doing it from the beautiful Carolinas. This is Andrew. Namaste. Have a great afternoon. Stay true, stay blessed. Continue to become awakened and aware and understand you are the priority. You come first, second, and third. And guys, watch the next video because there's so much more education on the channel. Just watch the next video. It's gonna be another good one. Continue to get educated. Continue to believe in yourself. And remember, no matter where you are on the planet, you are not alone. I love you, God bless you, and I'll talk to you tomorrow. All right, bye guys.